Most human beings are not at peace and they're running after it. Why do you think people go after one, go watch one movie, then another one comes out and they run after it, go, they're looking for tranquility, enjoyment, entertainment. Their heart should be finally at rest. Why is it that they get one car, then they run after another car? Get one house, run after another house. Why do we do that? Because we're not at rest. But Allah says, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ By remembering Allah, hearts will be satisfied, they'll be tranquil, they'll be at rest. That is the real fruit of iman. That is the real fruit. And when you have that, you have no loss. No loss is a loss. So just one example of that, inshallah, a real life example, and then we'll move forward, inshallah ta'ala. This, this, this friend of mine, you know, he used to own a car dealership, luxury cars, Muslim family, and they own all these cars, but they paid for them in cash because they didn't want to deal in riba and stuff. And they're like selling hundreds of thousand dollars of dollars worth of merchandise every single month. Business is good. And then you have Katrina, right? And the levees break, and they're right on the water. The only car left was the, I think it was the LS400 Lexus, the top, top of the class Lexus, that they escaped in. When I went to meet the brother, he and his father, he was delivering pizza in that Lexus. That's what his job was. Now you can imagine, they went from what to what, right? What kind of lifestyle, what kind of financial dealings? to what kind of lifestyle where they have to now deliver pizza and work at a pizza restaurant full time. But a big smile on their face. And I'm looking at them like, man, people if they suffer this kind of loss, either they pop a whole you know, bottle of Advil or Tylenol and get it over with, they jump off a cliff, they, they'll drown themselves, they can't take it anymore, you know? They don't want to deal with it. But why, what's, what smile on your face? He says, you know, when we were busy and when business was good, we didn't have time to go to the masjid, we didn't get to, I didn't get to see the wife much, didn't get to play with the kids. Now subhanAllah, we catch every salah in the masjid. There's still a roof over our head, food on our plate. What do we have to be ungrateful for? We should be grateful. <laughs> SubhanAllah. This doesn't happen unless you have iman. That kind of loss is not a loss. But if you don't have iman, then that's a loss. Then you will, be, you will collapse. You will no longer be, you won't even want to live. You know, people are willing to commit suicide because they wanted to, you know, get with this girl and she married somebody else and they jump off a bridge and this, this the real life story. Actually, I know of a Muslim kid that this happened to in the 90s in New York. Wanted to marry this girl, she married somebody else, he jumped off the, you know, the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Jumped and he killed himself. Committed suicide. It's a sad thing. But why, when does that happen? When you long for something other than Allah. And longing for Allah will give you tranquility and that will not happen until you have Iman. This is the escape from loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This is the first thing. So here Allah Azza wa is making us, one thing we're realizing is, we are answerable for every single act that we did consciously. Because there are behaviors, there, you know, by the way in our deen there's so much mercy, there are people who don't have control over their conscious behavior, they lose their sanity, they have all kinds of psychological disorders, they're, you know, and they are not, in, in our deen they're غير مكلف. They're not held responsible for their behavior. But amal in and of itself includes, Conscious action. And then the, the word after it, amilu as-salihat. The word as-salihat is actually an adjective. It comes from the word salaha. But when you put the feminine plural, this is considered a form of jam'u qilla, a plural of minimum. Meaning Allah is saying righteous deeds that I'm asking you to do are not countless. They are just a few. I'm not asking a lot of you. You just have to do a few good deeds. In other words, our deen isn't composed of an endless list of instructions. Allah has asked us for a few things, and we fail to do them, right? And the fact that Allah hasn't asked us for much is inside the word of salihat. Had it been a saliha, there would have been a lot more. It would have, rhetorically, it would have been a lot more. Subhanallah. So what are these few things, you know? The muharramat are a few. The main fara'id, the main obligations are a few. Then there are things in this deen that embellish your life as a Muslim. There are the sunan of the Prophet wasallam. There are behaviors that add, you know, make your etiquette, your manners, your behaviors better and better. They increase your iman and your taqwa. But at the heart of it, there are a few things you should definitely do. And there are a few things you should definitely not do. And they're not a lot. And there are so few that any Muslim knows them. The few things at the core of this deen are so few that any Muslim knows what they should do and what they shouldn't do. Even the guy who doesn't study Islam at all, doesn't learn anything, even that person knows they should pray five times. 
Even that person knows they should fast in Ramadan. Even that person knows they should go to Hajj. Even that person knows they owe something to tell their non-Muslim neighbor something about it. They should tell them something about Islam at least. They should know something. At least I'll give them a CD. I'll hand them a pamphlet. Something. They know that. They think the very basics everybody knows. Even if you don't know them in academic terms, they are just a few. This is the first thing I wanted to highlight. The second thing I wanted to highlight about as salihat is that this word in Arabic we say this has luzum and ta'addi in it. What that means in English, I know I'll use difficult words but I'll simplify them as we go on. This word is transitive and intransitive. The word salihat can be understood as transitive which is called ta'addi or muta'addi in Arabic and intransitive which is lazim or luzum infinitive. Okay? What does that mean? The benefit of knowing that is a salihat could be, a ref- uh, it could be describing the actions. Salih means that which corrects. So these are correct actions. These are correct, good actions. Actions that, pro, the, that in and of themselves are good, and the consequences of them are also good. That's when the word is lazim. If the word is muta'addi, you know what it means? The one who does them becomes good. Meaning these are means by which the person who does them is becoming good. In other words, this salihat could be, and the impact, the description could be of the action, and it could also be a means by which the person is being reconciled. You want to become a better person? Start doing better things. Do good things, and automatically you will start to become a better person. It's like good deeds are being described in this surah like medicine, that are making you better and better and better. Subhanallah. So the deeds in and of itself is good and they are making you good. They're correcting you, they're fixing you. And the more you abandon them, the sickness comes back. And the more you take this medicine, the more you start getting healed. That is embedded beautifully inside the word as salihat. It's incredible that Allah Azza wa Jal puts it in this way. Then the final two, just far as far as vocabulary. Let's look at, these are a little bit tougher words. So we'll just look at my notes inshaAllah ta'ala and conclude our third session. As far as linguistic analysis is concerned, the word tawasi, uh, related words from it are wasahu, wasahu, and awsahu, to charge someone, to command someone, bikada, to do such and such a thing. For example, if I say wasaituka, bis salah, it means I told you to make salah. I'm telling you, you really should make salah. Now, I'm not just telling you, I'm counseling you, I'm like kind of giving you a heart to heart. I'm doing my best to tell you, and I'm telling you in a way that makes you think this guy is telling me something that's good for me. You know, there's a way to tell someone something that aggrandizes yourself. Hey, you don't make salah? What's the matter with you? Right? That's just putting yourself up and putting them down. But then when you talk to someone in a way that they feel that you want what's good for them. Right? I really think you should come. I really think you should stop doing that. I mean, I'm worried about you. You know, the tone. This is in wasiyah itself. Wasiyah literally means to leave a will. And you know who you leave a will for? Loved ones. And a will is full of things that will benefit the people after you're gone. And it, uh, when the, someone writes a will, it implies they don't have a lot of time left, so they better write it up now, because once they're gone, who knows what's gonna happen. So they, they want to leave these important parting words to this person. This is the, at, at the heart of this word. What it cre- cre- uh, includes is a sense of urgency. It's like when you tell someone the truth, you have this urgency that I'm, I'm not gonna be around tomorrow, I better get this advice out to them now when I still can. You know, a lot of times when you, somebody needs your advice, you say, I don't know, I don't know how they're going to take it, man. I don't know if I should tell them. They're not going to like what I have to say. We're good friends, but if I bring this up, we, not, we might not be good friends anymore. They might not want to talk to me anymore. I'll wait for a better time. And you'll keep waiting for a better time, and a better time will never come. It's true, we should look for the right opportunity, but we should also have a sense of urgency. And the sense of urgency is inside the word tawasal. This is the first thing that we wanted to highlight. Then finally, at tawasi is from Bab at Tafa'ul, which means al ishtiraq. It includes in it this, this uh, uh, component of it is things that are done mutually. Meaning you are enjoining the other, you're telling the other truth, and the other is telling you a truth. And a part of that lesson we'll share today. Most of us look at it as an attack on our ego. Right? We look at how dare you? Who are you? Who are you? What, where did you get your ijazah that you can tell me what to do? Who made you Shaykh? Right? Since when are you the Imam? Right? These are the kinds of questions you might get. Who do you think you are? This is the kind of thing you might get. But what's your attitude when you're corrected? You take the best of it. 
Leave the bad of it. Don't assume this guy's doing it to insult me or humiliate me. Whatever their intention is with Allah, you don't have to judge their intention. You leave that alone. You just take the good of it. This is part of the spirit of Tawasi bil Haq. This last ayah, the summary of a Shawkani rahimahullah is a Jama'u bain al Iman Billah wal Amal is Salih, fa inna hum fi rabhin la khusr la la fi khusr. That these people gathered and they combined between Iman and good action. And this is something that comes up in tafsir over and over and over and over again. Iman and action are necessary consequences of each other. If you do good deeds, your Iman will increase. And if you have Iman, there is no way you can have it without doing good deeds. What kind of Iman is this that you have it and it doesn't lead you to any action? That's impossible. And there's no good action that doesn't end up increasing your Iman. Okay, so they, they have a, this mutual relationship. So when they develop this, فَإِنَّهُمْ فِي رِبْحِ Then they are definitely in a profit and not in any kind of loss. When they are able to make that connection between Iman and action. Unfortunately, a lot of Muslims believe their Iman, rather their Islam is good enough. They're, they're, they're set for paradise because they already said La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Without getting into, into any theological historical debates about which group said this About Iman and Amal, which group said that Without getting into any of that Just from a psychological point of view People have that as an escape Just like Christians have the escape I already said the name of the Lord You know I already pronounced I, I said I love Jesus Now I could be a drug dealer for all I care It's all good I'm already saved we have the same exact mentality seeped into the Muslim community when somebody says, I'm already Muslim. Yeah, I messed up, I do a lot of haram things, but come on. I'm already, I already got my ticket right here. I already said, La ilaha illallah. I already said, Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu That's good enough. I should be alright, because my iman is there. This surah makes it clear. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Not enough. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ When you fulfill all four, then you're saved. Until then, you're not saved. And what it also teaches is, if you think you have Iman and none of this is happening, then you probably don't have Iman. Chances are, you think you have Iman, but you don't. So the Bedouins thought they had Iman. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ amanna. In Surah Al-Hujurat, they said, we have Iman. Allah said, قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا No, you didn't, have, you didn't get Iman yet. وَلَكِنْ قُلُوا أَسْلَمْنَا You only have Islam. وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ Iman hasn't entered your hearts yet. 